Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I had a few amendments to the information on the Martian bacterial colonists of the human form here on Earth. Um, it, there's a reference in the Law of One to the great beings of light that altered the genes of the Martians' uh, bacteria as they made their way I believe it was on meteorites from uh, Mars to Earth, maybe with a stopover in and on the Moon. Uh, although how that could have happened, I don't know. But that's in their traditions. Something about the Moon. Um, uh, anyway, the reference says uh, something to the effect that these great beings of light might have been called the Logoi. Or that's plural of Logos, or the Elohim, I'm not sure, um, something along those lines, I altered them genetically uh, so that they'd be suitable for life on Earth. And I think that some of that genetic alteration, uh, this is my intuitive grasp of the situation, some of that alteration took place through their contact with the song of the uh, Leonid meteorites that um, they go by Earth, I think it's once a year. Uh, that song is part of their um, ancient wisdom. And uh, when they hear a song like that, I've written about that, about how the refrigerator units on, in the um, Target store in the shopping center near me made a sound that reminded the Martian bacterial colonists in my colon, that reminded them of the Leonids, the song of the Leonids make uh, as they traverse through Earth's highest atmosphere. I think it's once a year. Anyway, as you know, sound is a tool that alters light, and light is the uh, that from which the physical form is constructed, including the DNA template. And so it was this song of the Leonids, apparently, that um, that changed part of the part of the reason why these the Martian bacterial colonists changed enough to adapt to life on Earth and explains why they're so fond of that sound. It's part of their soul nature now. These intelligent beings. Uh, then there was one other thing. Um, oh yes, it has to do with the current DNA alterations that are taking place on Earth in more and more accelerated rate. Um, to do with the incoming light that has shifted and includes more of the central sun's light, which is more intelligent. You know, all light is intelligent, but the central sun's light is is. Is, is for around here it is the most intelligent. And there are several central suns that are available to us right now apparently. Um, one is the central sun of our galaxy, as I understand it. I don't know whether that's something bright or like the great attractor there. And another is the central sun of the local star group, and then there's the greater star group, and then there's the, there's quite a few. So, so a few are available to us, and this this great light that's coming in right now uh, allows the DNA, specifically in the human form, which is most important to us, to be altered. This year, as I understand it, from Judy Satori's work, that's at www.judysatori.com. Um, there are, are some alterations that are taking place in the, in the sequence of the DNA, like building blocks. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And I think that these changes are alterations. It, it must be that they're changing propensis, propensities towards disease to do with uh, ancient alterations in in the DNA template, both the soul DNA and the physical DNA template, um, uh, to do with soul wounding. So soul wounding is clearing up, and the DNA is clearing up, and part of the clearing of the DNA has to do with changes in the sequence of the building blocks of, of our personal DNA. 
Okay. Now, uh, there's, there's more to come and maybe even more happening now, which others are no doubt more versed in than I. And that has to do with the introns. Um, the introns, known as junk DNA, that are in our body, they are going to be uh, intelligently organized, as I understand it, as the light increases. So, so it's especially important, say those that are doing cloning experiments, using not the junk DNA, are making a big mistake because beings composed just of the stranded DNA that's currently available will be missing out on the opportunity to, to ascend and will uh, in, descend into uh, an unensold state, an animal state, over the, the, the next few generations. So it's important for scientists to take that into consideration. Don't eliminate introns in cloning experiments. Otherwise, uh, you'll, you'll come up with a subhuman species. Um, so, aiding this process, this gets me back to the Martian bacterial colonists of Earth, of our human form, and other forms on Earth, uh, and then many uh, organic and inorganic um, strata here on Earth as well. They're quite adventitious, you know, they're quite expansible and quite adaptable. And so you find them in the rocks, you find them in, you know, lava pools, you find them in the coldest possible places too, just everywhere. Already inside of our colons are uh, intelligent beings that can uh, recombine DNA themselves. Uh, and much has been written on that. I've written on it as well. And so the question is, what will guide these recombinant e efforts of the, of the Martian bacterial colonists? Could it be, this is my question, that they might be one mechanism of the changes that are going to be taking place over the next a decade or two uh, in, the, in the human DNA? Through, through, let us say, the guidance of, of the great beings of light, perhaps even as high up as was in the past, the Logoi, uh, the, 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 um, the Elohim, like that, at a very high level, and perhaps with the assistance of uh, the beings of Lyra, the, the women of Lyra who spin the DNA strands. What a cool event to know, to finally contact and understand these beings more thoroughly and to understand our place in this very orderly universe. Well, that's all for now. You all have a wonderful Lion's Gate gateway in preparation for the solar eclipse coming up shortly. It should be very interesting. Take care. <laughs>